You know, I've always loved a good hatch, and when that comes with plenty of power and a six-speed manual, I mean, color me intrigued. But the time that I've spent with this 2022 Volkswagen Golf R has been not quite as I expected. I mean, yeah, it looks great, but overall this car seems to be less than the sum of its parts. So I wanna talk about how this car looks because I think designers really hit the nail on the head here. You can only get it in three colors, but this blue is the business. And the fact that it matches the blue brake calipers, I mean, like that's just a bonus. But I'm very, very fond of what's happening here in the rear. I've got a spoiler up here, diffuser down below, quad exhaust pipes, and I love this redesigned R logo. I mean, everything here is just working so well together and it looks great. However, looks do not pay the bills when the tarmac turns twisty. So uh, let's hit the road, shall we? Now this car has got all of the features that should make it a great vehicle. I mean, a turbocharged two liter, four cylinder engine pushing out 315 horsepower, check. Six speed manual transmission, check. Torque vectoring all wheel drive, check, check, check and check. This car's got all the expected drive modes, plus you have a drift mode that's gonna throw all of the available rear torque to the outside wheel, so you'll get some sick smoky drifts. But you guys, it's really meant just for a track. I am on a public road and I'm not planning on getting arrested today. There's also a special mode which essentially sets the car up for the Nürburgring and it really increases the exhaust note. It's the most aggressive mode that this car has. I mean, compared to last year, the springs are stiffer, the front roll bar, that's stiffer as well. I've got adaptive dampers that are doing a lot of switching up as I'm going along. I mean, these brakes are fantastic. I've got a ton of stopping power and these Bridgetone Potenza summer tires, I mean, and they've got grip for days. I've been punishing them for the whole week and I haven't heard a peep out of them. It should be fun. And yet for some reason it's, it's not. I mean, is the car too perfect? Is it too precise? Is it too engineered? I mean, maybe. The only tangible fault I can find with this car is that the clutch engagement point is just a little bit vague, but that shouldn't be enough to overshadow all the other great features about this car. I mean, it should be great. It just kind of falls flat. It's like, if you've got someone that doesn't have a really good sense of humor and they're trying to tell a joke, like the joke could be really funny, but the delivery is all wrong. I mean, this thing even gives me an eco tip. Please note gear shift indicator and it's telling me to up shift. Like, bitch, I'm in race mode. Now I wanna talk a little bit about this new infotainment system that we've got going on. I mean, I love the 10.25 inch reconfigurable gauge cluster. You can just press this view button right here and I've got a lot of different ways to get all of the information that I want. The problem comes with this 10 inch screen here. I mean, like this part, like that's super cool. I enjoy that. And I do have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but some of the controls are just a little wonky. Like why is my climate control button right here? And when I get to climate control, why do I have two different ways of controlling it? Words or pictures? Like that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. And then along the bottom of the screen here, I've got some controls for temperature and for volume. First of all, they're not backlit, so it's really hard to see them at night. Second of all, when you rest your hand there to try to control the screen, like sometimes one of those features will come up when you don't want it, and that's super frustrating. And then it's not like a press and hold or a slider, it's this stabby thing in order to get it to work. It's just really frustrating and I hate it. comes in one trim only and it's pretty well equipped. These front seats are really comfortable. They are heated and cooled and then I also have heated rear seats. I've got a lot of driver's aids here including adaptive cruise control. Yes, with the manual. I mean, yeah, at slower speeds you have to shift which is kind of a bummer but at higher speeds when you can just keep it in six gear it works really well and really helps take some of the stress out of a long drive. The 2022 Volkswagen Golf R with the manual transmission is gonna set you back about $44,000 and that includes $995 for destination. But keep in mind that you only get 280 pound feet of torque with the manual. I mean, look, if you like the Golf R, you should totally go and drive it. Maybe you're going to like it, but for me, it, it just doesn't spark joy. 
think I'd probably just stick with a Civic Type R. All right, you guys, I would like to know what you think. Do you think this Golf R is pretty dope or would you go for, let's say, a Subaru WRX STI? Let me know in the comments and as always, be sure to like and subscribe and also pick the Subaru because that is the correct answer.